Hi, I'm so excited to um, be sharing with you some of my most favorite, favorite memories. And in sharing with you my most favorite memories as we celebrate 20 years of motivating the masses, I have to bring with me my favorite people. Like, so you may have seen my grandma, my mom, my brother, my dad, friends. Now you get to meet my niece. She would say my favorite niece. <laughs> but my other nieces might protest that. <laughs> my favorite niece, um, one of my just most amazing friends as well, Jade Cox. Hello. <laughs> so Jade, we are here to talk about some of our favorite memories. And we have done a lot together. <laughs> She's wondering, what are we gonna talk about? <laughs> so um, you have grown up in this conversation and this experience. Yes. First of all, how has that been? Just kind of, you don't have the, the ordinary girls, teenage or preteen life. You've grown up um, having hundreds, thousands of people um, around you, um, learning how to serve. Like that's been the number one thing that I think you've been taught watching you that you know how to serve, you jump in. Um, how has it been with the um, traveling and the events and the people and the service. How's it been for you? For me, I know that I was just brought up within the work and I, like she said, didn't have the ordinary life. So I was just brought along with them through events and mainly just becoming my own person at the same time and not just being someone's daughter or niece. Um, getting to learn about myself and my personality. I feel like I've met so many people who I've respected and so I've just built that respect within myself as well. What was one of the things that you experienced over the last, in your life, 18 years um, that you said, this is going to define me. I wanna make sure I hold on to this like a lesson that you witnessed somewhere or motivating the teen spirit. You know, you are one of our teen facilitators and our teen workshops, which you grew up in. Um, what was one of those things that you go, I'm gonna take this away, whether it be the integrity contract or the total truth or, and explain that. One thing that I'm taking away from motivating the teen spirit has to be the Coke demo and that's personally one of my favorites. Um, Explain it to those folks who don't know so about it. So the Coke demo is a self-reflective exercise. So we use a vase um, representing ourselves and then we add Coke, which is the real thing. Things that we're born with, characteristics, joy, happiness, love, curiosity. Now we're not promoting Coke and <laughs> drinking Coca-Cola, but way back in the day, long before she was born, yeah. <laughs> Coca-Cola had the commercial, Coke is the real thing. So we use that as the example. So we let Coke represent the characteristics in you. We pour it in the vase. Yes. As it's being poured into the vase and we grow older in age, we realize that we're not the only ones on this earth and there's other people who like to pour oil on us, meaning like you're stupid, you're just like your mom, you're just like your dad, you're not going to make it. Negative and, conversations. Yeah, negative self-talk. And then we pour in the oil to represent the negative conversations which become the negative self-talk. And as we begin to have this conversation within ourselves, we begin to believe it and it just magnifies into something bigger than us that we put a mask over our true selves and to cover up the oil because that's not what we as humans want other people to see when they first meet us. We don't want them to be dragged along and not want to get the real us. And so, so then we throw on this thing that we call glitter, mask, makeup, the class clown, just defensiveness. Defensive, so then the we wall. pour in glitter on top of the oil. And she has been teaching this lesson before she had the courage to speak. Um, she didn't want to talk, but auntie was leading the workshop. Mama was in the workshop, so she had to be in the workshop. And so we just have her add the oil and the and the glitter and the coke and she wouldn't say a word she'd be like I'm not talking <laughs> and then slowly but surely you would go 
uh, I have some for years. Like it would make three years before you would talk. And we were like, nope, we don't care if you don't talk, but you have to be in motivating the team spirit. You gotta be in the workshop, right? So I wanna talk about some of our personal uh, favorite memories and uh, what's a favorite memory of yours uh, that we've experienced? <laughs> Go ahead, tell them. You don't want to tell them. We don't want. <laughs> we don't want you to know that we we worship. So <laughs> we were leaving the nail salon one day. Go. So. <laughs> we were hungry. We wanted food. But then we decided that we wanted donuts. We, we really wanted a donut. <laughs> as bad as that is, we wanted a donut. And we talked ourselves like, you want a donut? I want a donut. And we made this donut larger than life. It was our life purpose to get this donut for the day. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else mattered. And it was 8 p.m. at night. We, we were the last ones at the nail salon. And we couldn't find a donut anywhere. Like, nowhere in two cities. <laughs> so, so we're driving. We finally decide we don't need a donut. She's an athlete. I'm a recovering former athlete. And we just know we don't need a donut. So we're talking to each other, right? We don't need that donut. <laughs> that donut's fine. Yep. And Trying then, to convince ourselves. <laughs> and then this is how we looked driving. You do how you were looking, I'll do how I'm looking. So we said we don't need the donut and this is both of us driving down the street. Looking for a donut <laughs> shop. Still looking for the donut shop. Then we bust each other. <laughs> you looking for the donut? I'm looking for a donut. We need to stop. And we still look for the donut shop all the way 30 minutes home. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, this is ridiculous. Then two days later, or was it one day, the next day? Yeah, the next day. The next day she sends me uh, she sends me a text message, guess what I'm thinking of? And it's a donut. And then I send back my Bitmojis, every donut Bitmoji I have. I'm like, eat it, let's do it. Like we just couldn't. And so when we saw each other again a week later, um, yeah, first thing we did. Get some donuts. Get some donuts. Some fresh. He had eggs. just made them, oh my God. So anyway. So if you're a vegan, sorry, we just, my favorite memory is when you were 10 and you scared the bejeebies out of me, you know it. We're 10, she's 10, we're at Big Bear and Big Bear is a, um, a camping ground in California, Southern California that has bears, bears. Living bears. And she's 10 and all of her cousins are all boys. There's, there's no girls there, all, girl. all boys. She's a tomboy though, so they're not like, don't be fragile with her, we have to tell her to stop beating them up. They go fishing, about how many of you? I'm not sure, just I know all the boys, granddad, so, and Uncle Papa. So there must be probably seven to nine of them fishing. No one catches a fish. Bet me, <laughs> I was the only one. And so they are very angry, so they're teasing her and giving her a hard time. She's a baby, but they're all giving her a hard time. And she's like, you guys better leave me alone. You better leave me alone. And they don't leave her alone. So we go to bed. Now, first of all, you gotta tie all your, your food up in bags and you have to cart them over to a big bin and you got, it has to be closed and all this stuff because it's called Big. Bear. Big. Bear. Which means there are. Bears. So. We are all locked down for the night. It's a ton of us. It was like 40 of us, um, a big family. The kids are all sleeping. The next morning I get up and they're all sleeping in their own tent. I asked Jade the next morning, hey baby, where's that fish that you caught yesterday so we can cook it today? I'm thinking it's on ice. We're gonna cook her little fish. And she says, auntie. I buried it in the front of the boys' tent. I was like, you did what? I buried it in front of the boys' tent. And I you said- You were sabotaging me, I had to do something. <laughs> I said, why? 
Did you bury a fish? Now, mind you, it's a shallow. She didn't, she's 10. It wasn't deep. It was like a little bit of dirt over it, right at the door of their tent. A bear could have came at any time and smelled the fish. And when I asked her, why did she do it? Do you remember what you told me? Because <laughs> they're bothering me. And I told him to leave me alone. So I wanted to see if the bear would really eat him. <laughs> I was like, my heart was beating so fast because I only had one child in that tent. There were like seven other kids that belonged to other bears. And she was just like this. They kept bothering me. <laughs> so I wanted to see if the bear, that was the last time, was it not? Yep. They never did what again? They never bothered me again. <laughs> Done. My threat was real. Say it again. My threat was real. <laughs> so, my niece, um, Margaret Packer's beautiful daughter, um, Jay Cox, is nothing to joke with. Um, we had a great, the boys still like leave Jade alone, don't bother Jade, and they're all in their 20s now, <laughs> and they still leave her alone. So, it's our pleasure and honor to celebrate some of our favorite moments with you. Um, I think one of the things that we demonstrate, we're not a perfect family, but one of the things that we really have demonstrated was not to leave family behind, to do family. One of the things that I know my niece knows is that no matter what we're doing, no matter where we are, she's welcome. Hmm. Yes. You know that, right? She knows that she fits. If we fit there, she fits there. And so I think that's one of the biggest things that um, I'd love for this to be a takeaway, is bring your tribe along. I'm glad I did. She keeps me young. I keep her sizzling. I keep her that's in trouble. True. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> she has a little spice to my life, literally. <laughs> I love you. Love you too. I appreciate you and who you are and our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> You're so cute.